Yep, that's that's hot. So, one of the kind of cool things about stainless steel, by the way, I did not weld this, is I can just grab this. This was welded 10 minutes ago. This is fine. Because stainless steel is a terrible conductor of heat. Like, out of all the metals, it's bad. It's really bad. So, this right here is not that hot. This is... It gets hot quickly because it doesn't conduct heat that well. If this was copper, this would all be about equally heated all throughout here. But this is stainless steel, so it ain't. So, I mean, why you need to know that, I don't know. But, like, it's, it's interesting. It's a fact. So, I got some DOM tubing, which is this stuff right here. It's six feet long. It is... I don't remember. It's 58 or 0 0.58 wall tubing. I think it's one and a quarter inch. Basically, if I have a scooter here, which I don't, it's the same size as scooter bars. Same with, uh, let me just, this is seven eighths. So this is the exact same size as the top bar of a scooter. So we're gonna make a scooter bar, or at least we're gonna try to. Affinity scooter bars, they're, they're awesome bars. At least I hear, I've never had a pair because they're both, one, expensive, Two, they're super hard to find. Like, so I was in Arizona last August, and I stopped at, what's the shop called? It's over by Amazing Gelato Place right next to there. The Grind Shop? Is that it? Sure. Anyways, like I asked the guy there, do you have affinity bars? And he's like, no, we sell out super quickly after we get them. We barely ever have them in stock. And it's not because they don't buy enough, it's that they can't buy enough because Affinity doesn't make enough bars. So I'm gonna make a pair of knockoff Affinity bars. <laughs> that is the plan here. I mean, they're not technically knockoff because I'm not claiming that they're Affinity, they're just, they're, they're the same kind of dimensions as Affinity. I'm probably gonna end up changing what I make slightly later, but um, so yeah, that, that's the plan for right now. The first, oh, I'm also not gonna, not gonna do it exactly right. This is just me messing around, kind of. The first step is to um, crush this end of this tube. I need it less than seven eighths of an inch wide. So my plan to crush it is just to take this, uh, this bench vise right here and just kind of put it in the bench vise and crush it. I'm gonna potentially first heat it up. But the problem with that is this bench vise right here, the jaw is not wide enough. I need it to be taller so it evenly crushes this. So, to the scrap heap, um, we're just gonna steal angle iron. So we're just gonna take it, basically, we might actually be able to get away with just taking these bars of angle iron and just kinda setting them in there. Yeah, sure. Let me grab a shorter one though, because this one's, this is long. By the way, half the reason I'm doing this is because if I'm already making rails, I might as well make scooter bars. So I'm just trying to figure out like, is it a dumb idea? That's in there. All I will end up doing is basically just taking this. Yeah, that's all we're gonna do. Let me quick put you on a tripod and we're gonna heat this thing up. So this is all gonna go down kind of quick. I'm not gonna have time to explain what's going on. That's just going there to try and kind of block some of the heat and push it back in. A few safety tips if you ever decide to do this dumb thing. Um, first one, don't. I believe as some man said at one point in time, uh, don't try this at home. I'm what you might call an expert. Definitely, I'm definitely an expert. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna heat it up. This is just trying to try and bounce some of the heat back. I'm going to then take it and I'm gonna put it right in here. And then I'm gonna crush it. That's the plan. I've got six feet of this. I can mess it up a few times. I'm thinking I'm gonna get this run red hot. Just like kind of a nice toasty hot if I can. We're already at around probably 400 degrees on this thing, judging by the color change. Never mind, we're probably at 1500 already.
Hey, it's looking good. Oh, that sounded horrific. It should be about this wide. We're close. That should do it. Let's find out if it's small enough. Yep, you can see the marks on it. That looks about the right size. We got it. That's it, that's all you need to do to make the end for a pair of scooter bars. Then we're gonna take an end mill on a mill and cut a 7 8 inch slot in it. That's the next step. Yeah, it looks pretty good too. If you look at it, it's not too marked or anything either. So hopefully everything I just did made sense. I just heated it up to make it easier to bend, and then I just crushed it in this vise. So what I did is I took, I took this piece, I would put it inside the vise, like so, and then I would clamp the vise down so it would crush it slightly. And I just kept on doing that. I would move it in and out, changing where I'm crushing it from just to get it more consistent all the way through. And now, if you look, from the side, you can see that it kind of tapers in. And if you look from the end, if you could focus, it again tapers in. By the way, it is still crazy hot. But yeah, that, that's all there is to it. So that's the bending. Now I did slightly mess with the actual structure of the steel doing that. That is one of the reasons I'm just leaving it out to cool in ambient air, is because this 4130 chromoly, I think, yeah, 4130 chromoly is a normalized piece of steel, which means they take it and they heat it up real hot. They heat it around 50 degrees above, what's it called? The critical point. I don't know what that is. I think that's around 1500 degrees. So they heat it to about 1600 degrees. And then they let it air cool. And what that does is that straightens the, that the grain structure of the steel changes to a more, to a shape that is less brittle and more ductile. So that's what I'm doing here, is I'm not cooling this on quickly, because if I cooled it on quickly, like if I dunked it in water, it would become brittle and it would crack, potentially. This way, it'll be more likely to bend than it will crack, because I'm just letting it air cool. What I can do to make it even less likely to crack, is you cook it, you cool it in vermiculite, um, but that's called annealing, and then it's super soft. This is like a middle-ish ground, so that's what I'm doing here. So it's about uh, a week later, nah, four or five days since, no, four, four days since the last bit of this video that I've recorded. The reason for that is I've just been busy with school. Um, I did actually, so I forgot to record part of the actual making of the uh, scooter bars. Let me quick, this is the tube that they are. We got two parts, this part, which is the steerer tube, and then the handlebar tube. I never actually measured any of this crap before I made the scooter bars. So we're gonna try them out and see if they work. First step with that is take apart the scooter. Let's try quarter. This is an M6, I'm pretty sure. Don't use Imperial on metric, but is it gonna let me get away with it? It is gonna let me get away with it. Like I said, kids, don't use Imperial on metric. You ruin your, your screws, bolts, hex, socket head. I am near, yeah, I'm positive I will need a new clamp. That's just a given. No, I can make a shim. Why could I not make a shim? Right. It's pretty good. I think yours bent though. Ah, oh, my fork's bent. So anyways, the thing that I forgot to record that I did with these pair of bars is this is the end that we're gonna weld on the the handle to. I got the slot milled in it so the handle bar fits right in there. So yeah, I am willing to put money on it that that is the world's largest pair of scooters. I mean, it's not put together, 
but if I wanted to. Okay, let's get welding. Okay, so my plan on what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to first cut these two bars down. I don't even know what dimensions I'm doing yet. I'm gonna need to look that up. I'm gonna cut this bar down to however long I need it. Then I'm gonna cut this bar down to however long I need it. Then I'm gonna <laughs> weld them together. Ah, first I need to clean all that up. I'll be right back once that's clean. So while I'm getting this set up, I'm gonna tell you some about the uh, mild safety concerns with making scooter bars. The problem with the the problem with uh this steel is it's actually chromoly steel. What the chromoly means is it's a it's a mix of it's mostly still just carbon steel, but it also has some uh, chromium in there. Chromium is a known carcinogen. Cancer ain't cool, my dudes. Well, you're supposed to use this. Is it really that important? It is actually really important. Don't skip it. I say as I'm skipping it. Chromium is a known carcinogen. It is inside the steel. There's a very low percentage though, so I'm, I'm only doing two cuts. It should be fine. I'm not in California, so it's okay because in California, everything's known to cause cancer. I'm pretty sure how it works is if you're not in California, you can't get cancer. That is, that is in fact how I understand this whole thing to work. So by the way, I am literally copying Affinity scooter bars currently. I'm gonna call them Infinity scooter bars. Got them. So I need something as tall as Affinity bars anyways, so I might as well just copy them because it seems like about the exact size I want anyways. How bad will this hurt to not wear a uh, coat glove thing? I'm just gonna stand to the side of it. These are all the parts we're going to need. It's pretty simple scooter bars. So I don't really care enough about this video to take off the respirator. I'd rather my lungs stay in moderately decent condition. Ah, whatever. I don't... My lungs don't matter. I have adequate ventilation in here. So, yeah, just the two parts. All we're going to end up doing is taking this part, putting it up here, and then welding this part to here. Bam, scooter bars. Oh, also we're gonna cut a slit in the bottom because IHC, HSC, I've got one of those compressions. That's about it. And I'm going to painstakingly deburr this by hand. I'm just gonna click mark center of this. I'm just gonna click take the crossbar. Find, yep, this is 24 exactly. So we're just gonna mark it right at 12. Right there is the center. I'm gonna get all this clamp down, you're ready to go, and then I will, no, wait. The next step is actually to clean this. Scotch Bright, woo. I'm gonna quick clean all this stuff and get it clamped up and then I will be back. Okay, so I believe this is all ready to be welded. So the way that I did this is sketchily. So first thing is I marked the centers, put the centers on the centers. Um, then I use these shims to bring this up to the right height-ish. Uh, then from there, I got, so this tabletop was actually laser cut, so I know that this tabletop has square edges, or else the $100,000 laser isn't cutting square, which doesn't happen. I measured this to the edge of the table, so the back over here is the same length to the edge of the table as the front up here, and then I did the same thing over here, because I cannot put a square in here to square it because if you look this tapers out let me turn up the brightness yeah if you look it tapers out so the square actually isn't square yeah and then these clamps are just you know holding everything down so nothing moves oh it also has if you look super close which i don't think my camera will be able to do it there's a about a thirty thousandth of an inch gap around the edge because I felt like it, sure. That's mostly that's mostly there to prevent warpage. Okay, we're gonna do it DC 150 amps, 58 wall. Now nah, we're welding to 62 though, so 80 amps. Pre-flow 0.2, post of eight, yes. Okay, so I will be using a TIG welder. This is very much a TIG welder job, so. 
about 80 amps, um, I think 330 seconds wire, and a foot pedal. Because I don't not have a foot pedal, I, I only have a foot pedal. Well, I mean, technically, yes. By the way, I'm just using ER70S2. If you don't weld or care about welding, just, just ignore the numbers and words that I'm putting out into this YouTube video. So since I haven't actually, uh, since I haven't actually uh, welded it yet, I am not committed. I don't have to be committed yet because it's not welded. So I quick put it on my scooter since it's only tacked together. Seeing if it feels, seems like the right size. I'm gonna need a quick check for square. And if it's square, this, this is the plan. By the way, this is in fact hot. Oh, yeah. But see, seems good. I think I'm going to need to cut down the bars because that's a little... We have to be way out here to not get hit by the 12 inch bars. So I'll probably cut two inches off each side. Maybe even just an inch. So yep, looks good. Let's get back to welding it. Okay, this is weld numero uno. I'm going to weld this probably in four segments. I mean, I guess. And I will do better on this side. I'm blaming this on a lack of sleep. It's like nine o'clock. I need sleep. It's a little bit better. Now, how the heck am I gonna do with those well? Uh, I'm probably gonna go over this whole thing with a pulse. So I don't like how it looks. The pulse makes me the welder I ain't. Well, this is terrible. Time to try some manual pulsing. Could be better, could be worse. Oh, let's try it again. Good enough for me. The next step is to use the DC pulse functionality that my welder has to make me the welder I ain't. Cause this doesn't look the best. So I quick ran over it with the DC pulse setting on my welder. It's looking much better. Still not perfect, but like this is, this looks decent. So, I kind of like the look of the, uh, it does in fact, that middle part is like burning hot. It fits. The scooter's looking weird because I've never had bars like that. So yeah, now the next step is don't touch that. So the next step is um, probably to powder coat it. I think, yeah. So I will probably, in a few days, I'm gonna pick up this video again and we are going to powder coat the bars. It, okay, I'm just gonna say, like, it just, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't look okay. It, it just looks different. It's not okay. I'm thinking I'll either do a blue or just the same John Deere black and be boring. I don't know yet. Um, a few other things. All I did was I just used the DC pulse setting to, uh, make the welds a little bit better. They got a little hot, so they don't look great. But, meh, it looks good enough. So, uh, it looks like it's welded fine. Uh... What other things? So yeah, next step is to powder coat it. The other thing I need to do is I need to... So I really like my tilt clamp. I love the color of it. I love the shape. I'm not giving this thing up. Even though I've been using oversized bars and this is an oversized clamp, I'm, st I'm still gonna use this. This is my, like, the only part on my scooter I really care about is this clamp. I'm not getting rid of this clamp. Um, but the problem is, and I put the clamp on, 
would you look at that? It, it won't clamp because it's an oversized clamp. Oh, did you hear, did you hear that? Oh, that's a good fit. That is a beautiful noise because that's like, that's suction. Like it's sucked on here. I mean, not actually, but you get what I mean. Like it's the thud from when it releases the air. Oh yeah. Anyways, I need to make a shim so this fits with this. Cause I'm not giving this up and I'm too broke to buy a new one. But the thing is, I don't have the equipment to make a shim for this. I also don't have the equipment to powder coat. So I'm probably just gonna do them both in the same day and go use equipment that's not mine that can do both of those things. I may also, because I have a still some leftover tube, I may make another uh, bar because I could do better welding it. So yeah, that's the plan. Probably it's Thursday today. I'll probably uh, powder coat it Friday, no, Saturday or Sunday. Maybe tomorrow, I'm not really sure. I'll be back once it is one of those days. Okay, so I'm currently at the place where I am powder coating the scooter bars. I already did it though, because, uh, well, it's kind of hard to show it because generally there's uh, that air compressor running. Uh, in here is filled with powder coat dust. Over here, the same blasting dust. It's basically just really hard to record. I tried to record it, but I couldn't. Um, it is currently baking. It's got some 20 minutes left. Let me quick show you the 300 degree oven because powder coat bakes at 300 degrees and it's basically a plastic layer that bakes on. Right in there is the actual bars, way back there. Yeah, so there's the temperature. 387 degrees Fahrenheit. 20 minutes at that. That's a lot of buttons. And then these are the different actual powder coating equipment. This is the gun. It sprays powder coat into this booth and that thing sucks the powder coat away. So yep, yeah, this is what it is like getting them powder coated. It takes 10, 15 minutes each bar because you have to first sandblast it. Then you take it from sandblasting, you put it on one of these types of racks and then you bring it into this room right here, which is actually a paint booth, but without the fire protection stuff, this powder coat doesn't light on fire. You put it in here, you put on your KKK mask, and then you powder coat it with that thing. First it has to be grounded though, because you're actually, this is shooting multiple kilovolts out the end of the nozzle, which makes the powder coat positively charged, which means it is lacking electrons. And since this is grounded, it has electrons, so it then falls onto the stuff. Sure, I think that's how it works, so. Okay, the spacer is uh, dry. Looks real nice if you look at, like, look at how shiny that is. So the spacer probably will not actually fit in the clamp because there's around 3,000, or let's quick measure. I'm gonna quick go measure to see what the thickness of this is. It's right between two and four thousandths of an inch, so pretty moderately consistent. So, because it won't fit, I'm gonna stretch the clamp. You just put a spacer of some sort inside the clamp like that. Tighten this down just slightly. Oh, that fits really nice too. Turns out the bars are actually dry too, so uh, let's just set the whole thing up. Just drop this on here, put the bolts in. So there's the bars. They are just a matte kind of gray. At least try them once, be sure they work right. <laughs> the only problem is I'm currently in boots. Yeah, they both look and work real good. Okay, so just got done powder coating them. They look great. So, uh, yeah. Well, nah, I don't think I should end the video here. I need to at least actually try them. So I will be back once I have a time to try them. So I am back at our house and not a powder coating shop. And uh, it's relatively nice out today. Now that I have moderately decently sized bars, I'm gonna try and scooter some. Got the rail out. Um, by the way, it actually is looking like I will be able to, I am actually planning to make these rails. Um, I'm currently working on the LLC filing. Got some names of people that'll actually machine the different parts for it so it's probably looking like I will actually be able to make these rails so 
so yeah that's a quick update on that hopefully i'll have them made in the next few months like the next two or three months i'm hoping not really sure though so so yeah Okay, so I can confirm these scooter bars work pretty good. Here's a better close up of them. They're just like a dark gray. I think I may have been better off going with black, but yeah, whatever. I think I'm gonna end the video here though, because uh, scootering is a lot of work. Oh yeah, and uh, along with the rails, drop in the comments if you want me to make these scooter bars. Just probably just make T bars like this but better colored. <laughs> so yeah, if you think that'd be uh, something you might be interested in purchasing from my from my LLC that doesn't exist. Uh, yeah, drop in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Like, if you like, like it if you liked it, subscribe if you liked it, share it if you liked it. I'll see ya.